AITA for saying my in-laws treat me like a live in maid and wanting to move out? I am not the original poster. That is you, soft career, 8688. She posted in R, am I the asshole? Trigger warning. Emotional abuse. Less than. Mood spoiler. Positive ending. Less than. Original post. May 22nd. 2023. IF. 26. And husband M. 27. Live with his parents. His father had some health issues and needed some care and we agreed to move in to help out. Phil is generally doing better now. But there's still a few things he can't do anymore that my husband is now instead. We've discussed moving out. I want to. But my in-laws are very resistant to the idea. Stating that there's plenty of room here and they don't know what they'd do without us etc. While we don't pay his parents to live here. Their decision. We pay for groceries for everyone and several household bills electricity. Internet. TV packages etc. The house is mortgage free. I also do all the household cleaning and cooking. I arrange and take all their pets to their veterinary appointments too. I do work from home so this is easier for me and as I'm able to be flexible. We also pay half of any house modifications, upgrades as, it'll be your house one day. Recently I have begun to feel resentful of the fact that once they are all done with work they can come home and relax. Whereas I finish work and have to cook and clean and have no help. On the weekends I spend half of the day cleaning the house while they do what they want. This all came to a head last week. I was really unwell. I felt the worst I've ever felt and wanted nothing more than to sleep however once it got around to Dinner time I was woken by my mill to ask when I was getting up to make dinner. I didn't want to cause an argument so I just got up and made dinner for them. But as I was in the kitchen struggling not to pass out. The three of them sat watching a movie. Waiting for me to bring in their food. I didn't say anything at first. I waited until my husband and I were alone to bring up my concerns with the lack of help. My husband apologized and offered to help more which I accepted. But the next day was an exact repeat I had to drag myself out of bed to cook and once I'd brung in. Their food my mill says, oh you look truly awful. Poor you. Oh by the way later would you mind giving everywhere an extra clean? I don't want to get whatever you have. At which point I accused them of treating me like a live in made and not caring about me outside of the services I provide for them. I pointed out that I wouldn't be in the communal areas if I hadn't been dragged out to cook and that they could have handled one meal themselves. My husband sat there in silence. He thinks I should have brought it up more carefully. At a time when I wasn't so emotional, I agree that I probably should have. But I was sick and stressed. I want to move out but husband and in-laws are still against it. Nothing has changed with what they expect from me. I got no apology just silent treatment from Mill for a couple of days. So. Am I the asshole? Relevant comments. Oop clarifies quite a few things in this comment. Thank you for all the comments. This is my first post so I'm not sure if this is the best way to address some of the questions but. Here we go. It didn't start off with me doing everything. Before we moved in with my in-laws. My husband and I split everything equally and that worked great. Once we moved here. I picked up a bunch of the household chores because I work from home and I'm here. It just made sense. Slowly over time there's just been things added here and there and that has snowballed into the current situation. I have stood up for myself a few times. But it's an incredibly difficult situation. I'm very aware this is not my house. They are not my parents and the things I would say to my own parents are not the same I feel I could say to his. I moved across the country before we got married none of my friends are here. Most of my closest friends are my husband's friends wives etc. I don't have any family nearby. I've always felt as though if I pushed too hard it would be everyone against me and I didn't realize before now how toxic of an environment that is. 
The inheritance of the house isn't something I want need. This was never supposed to be a long-term thing and I guess I've just felt pressure to contribute to certain things involving the house because we do live here and my husband will get the house one day. He's an only child. Overall it's just been very eye-opening to realize maybe I'm not being as silly as I'm often made to think. All the little things spiral into one big mess and my husband should be sticking up for me not contributing to the problem. I've tried talking to him about things several times and he'll be helpful for a couple of days before resorting back to mummy's little prince. I know I've been needing to get out for a while. I think this is just the push I needed to make such a massive life decision. Thanks Reddit. What exactly is it that your husband does that your Phil can't do? At this point, I'd say he's recovered enough that he should be able to do most things. But it's mostly walking his dogs. Anything involving any sort of lifting. Nothing that couldn't be done by outside sources if we were to leave. Oop is voted NTA. Update in comments. August 29, 2023. Three months later. I'm not really sure how to best go about updating. But I guess here is as good as any. Firstly thank you to everyone that reached out. I haven't been able to get back to everyone but I did read every message. Now for the part you all want cold sweat smile. After making this post I started putting my wages into my own bank account. I removed all of my savings from our joint savings account and transferred everything from my own safety account just in case. This turned out to be the best decisions because I found out I was pregnant roughly two weeks after. This post I'd been told at 15 that due to some medical conditions I'd never be able to get pregnant. Naturally so it was a complete shock. Once I had a scan to check everything was okay. Thankfully it was. We told my in-laws and this is what gave me the final shove I needed. Immediately names were being thrown around and my mill started talking about going reducing her. Hours to part-time, early retirement so she could be around to raise the baby. This rubbed me completely the wrong way. I didn't want anyone else raising my baby. Colors for the nursery and themes etc were all being discussed constantly but never with me or my opinions being taken into consideration and within a week I felt as though I was just an incubator. The final straw happened when myself, my husband's cousin, F29, and Mill went shopping. I had been looking at the different kind of breast pumps before being told that I would be bottle feeding so everyone could help out. I didn't want to cause a scene in the middle of the shop so I moved on to outfits. But everything I picked up or looked at was either the wrong color or style or something. I'd picked out one outfit, which would be my first baby purchase and Mill snatched it out of my hands before I could pay telling me that it was the wrong sort of outfit. It wasn't gender neutral enough and, if the baby is a boy like we're hoping then it's far too feminine. I didn't need to be told what I could and couldn't dress my own child in. Nor did I appreciate the suggestion that they would all prefer a boy. Let alone being told how I would be feeding my child. So, I left. I tried talking to my husband on three separate occasions and he either made excuses or blew me off. Entirely. I couldn't handle it anymore. I packed my bags and went to stay with my sister for a week. My husband called once and asked me to go home. Once. I made it clear I wouldn't be returning to live in that house. That I would raise the baby on my own if he didn't want to leave but I would not allow my child to be raised in such a toxic environment. As a big surprise to no one. He stayed put. After that I got spammed with texts in the family group chat. But I left and deleted them all. I've started the divorce process and hopefully, as I've saved everything disgusting message from either my ex or his family about both myself and my baby they won't get any form of custody. Although, since I announced the gender they've all gone quite silent. I now have a small three-bedroom house. I'm only renting for now while I wait for the divorce to finalize. 
but it's plenty big enough for the two of us. My daughter will grow up surrounded by my family and plenty of cousins to play with. The house is pretty bare at the minute as I only got the keys a couple of days ago. But I have time before she gets here to make sure everything is ready. Thank you again for all your kind words. The situation didn't play out how I'd hoped. But I can't help feeling like it's for the best. Oop is having a girl. She will likely not hear a peep from her husband or in-laws again. Which sounds like it's for the best. I applaud Op for standing for herself. Children shouldn't have to be raised in a toxic household especially with the in-laws being extremely toxic. Husband is definitely a mama's boy and will probably never learn. Wish Op well for her future and the baby has a good future with no further toxicity. Although, since I announced the gender they've all gone quite silent. Immediately knew it was a girl. Not that it was a hard thing to figure out. These people make their dill work. Cook. Clean. Pay for almost everything. And think they're gonna play house with OOP's baby. And yet still manage to tack on another layer of horrible. It's like an asshole milfoil. Mama's boys. They forever stay as boys and never learn how to stand on their own feet or stand up for what's right. So gross. Maybe the reason Oop hasn't heard from them is because they all starve to death as Oop isn't there to feed them. I can't imagine feeling so invisible in my pregnancy as she did and completely unworthy of making my own decision about breastfeeding my child. And what a complete dolt her husband is. I hope the custody goes well. Op stands for herself. She has a load of courage. Wow. Shame on that man. I can kind of see how he didn't realize exactly how bad it had gotten for Oop. I mean. She didn't either until it smacked her in the face. But after Oop confronted him multiple times. He should have started paying more attention to just how unfairly she was being treated. Then, come to find out she's pregnant and still not do anything? I mean, he basically made zero effort to try to get her to stay? Wow, he sure knows how to make a girl feel wanted. S. She was the frog in boiling water. Good for her for listening to the commenters siding with her. Finding her shiny spine and putting a plan into action. It's easy to feel crazy when you're surrounded by crazy people, and it's hard to pull yourself out of it. I always wonder in situations like this would this have happened if they didn't move in with the in-laws? Or was this inevitable? The husband called once? Glad Oop got out. I can't imagine being out shopping to pick something for my first baby and being denied that joy by a bully. I don't know what's worse. That I was able to do whatever I wanted and get whatever I wanted because my monster of an ex abandoned us horrifically or that this new mom is with the father and gets bulldozed by his mother on what should be a sentimental, wonderful moment of purchasing the first baby items like this is one of those moments that I'm glad I had no one to say a goddamn thing to me. Plus, my own immediate family is sane, reasonable, and kind. I'm sorry to op and very proud of her. It's crazy how the husband and family just gave up on Oop once they found out the gender of the baby. For extra regressive asshole energy. They stopped harassing Oop once they found out her baby wasn't a son to carry on the family name. Or whatever their reasoning was. That's a very Asian dynamic. Right down to everyone tuning out once they discovered the baby was a girl. I'm Asian. This is one of those cases where I wouldn't list a father on the birth certificate. Child support isn't worth the toxicity the baby would potentially be exposed to. What a pathetic man she married. I'll say this a million times. 
I love my mother but there's not a chance in hell in that situation when I'll stay quiet. I got more. Mad reading about his husband than her mill. I feel like every update includes a surprise pregnancy these days. Damn, I am so glad Oop shined up her spine and took back her life. Lol OOP's husband just nuked his own marriage to placate his mother. I hope he likes living with mummy and daddy. He's going to be there for a long time. So they went silent after she announced the gender and then in the next paragraph mentioned she was having a girl. I think we all know why they went silent. She's not having a precious son, grandson so they can ignore her now. Another man not clear on Punnett Squares has bread, yay. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.